My name is Canon James Hugelwer from the Institute of Christ the King, Sovereign Priest, and I would like to speak to you uh, today about the great feast of Christ the King, which we will be celebrating this coming Sunday. The feast of Christ the King uh, was instituted by Pope Pius XI at the conclusion of the holy year 1925. He particularly wanted to establish this feast to strengthen devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ and to enforce on the minds of the faithful the fact that Christ truly is our King. Christ is King of our intellects, our wills, and our hearts because He is our Creator, He is our God. And also He is King of all men because He has redeemed us all by His most precious blood. Pius XI also had in mind to institute the Feast of Christ the King particularly because of the political situation at the time. The First World War uh, had just been finished and it seemed that the rulers of the world had many more earthly things to deal with than spiritual realities. In fact, Pius XI was very sad to see that there were governments, particularly uh, socialist and communist governments, that were kicking Christ and his church out of their societies. And he saw the sad effects that this had on society. And so he hoped that the establishment of the Feast of Christ the King would remind all that Christ is truly our King, not just King of the faithful, not just King of the baptized, who have separated themselves from the one true Church of Christ through heresy and schism, but Christ is truly King of all men, for he has purchased us all with his precious blood, and we all are subject to him. Uh, also desired that on the Feast of Christ the King, we would renew our act of consecration of the human race to Christ the King, to his most sacred heart. He desired that the feast be celebrated on the last Sunday of October. At the end of October, we have neared the end of the liturgical year. And so the Feast of Christ the King is sort of a culmination of all of the great mysteries of our Savior's life, which we have celebrated throughout the course of the year, beginning with his coming to us as man at Christmas, through accompanying our Lord's sorrowful passion during Lent and Holy Week, his triumph over sin and death at Easter, and then the coming of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, and then throughout the summer as we celebrate his most sacred heart and the Feast of Corpus Christi. The Feast of Christ the King would be celebrated as a culmination of all of these events and, how, uh, and help us to remember that Christ reigns in heaven. The provincial of the Institute of Christ the King in America has asked the faithful to join in a great novena to Our Lady Immaculate, praying the Most Holy Rosary daily and adding the act of contrition and the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel leading up to the Feast of Christ the King for our nation, so that Christ might truly reign here. We beseech Our Lady and St. Michael to have pity on our nation in these difficult and turbulent times, so that all men in America might recognize Christ as King and we might enjoy the peace of Christ, for true peace only comes from Him, and we can only receive it when we acknowledge Him as our Savior.